Okay, my paper has conditioned in the damp pack and it is time to print. I have my paper with my damp pack right here, right above my block. So what I can do when I'm ready to print is just pull out a sheet of paper like so and register it right on the block. I forgot I put my registration there. <laughs> oh man, I'm going to have to move this over. But the point is my, my paper is in easy reach so I can just pull it out and register it on the block. I have my pigment and my paste. The Nori paste is a binder for the pigment. It will give the ink more body on, on the print. If you're printing large areas like this, sometimes it helps to have a Nori paste. I know some printmakers that don't use Nori at all, but if you print with water, uh, large areas like this might print a bit thin. That's okay. That could be the aesthetic that you're going for. If you want your print to feel a little bit more like wash, your ink to be a bit thicker, then it's a really good idea to use this Nori here. I've squirted a bunch of the Nori into this glass jar and I have watered it down. So it's kind of like the thickness of custard. You can see it kind of drip like so. We will use the, uh, the chopstick to transfer the nori to the block. The sumi ink, I'm going to pour directly into the glass jar. Because I want to print a grayish translucent color, I'm going to mix it with water as well. I'm going to take some water and squirt it in here to really water down the sumi ink. I want it to be a light color. This is my pigment transfer brush. The Japanese term is Hakobi. Hakobi. Uh, you know, this brush comes in the Mokohanga kit. However, you can use just a normal flat paintbrush for this part, like a smaller flat paintbrush. And all this brush does is transfer the pigment to the block. This is my stenciling brush. This is what I'm going to use to ink the block with. And then I have my Varen. This is what I'm going to use to print the block, okay? We print with hand pressure. And when we hold the Varen, we hold it by taking the Varen like so, sliding your finger under it, and then sliding your hand under it, your fingers, and then pulling them together, like kind of like a fist. But you're gonna print with wrist pressure right here. So you'll be pushing down with wrist pressure and that is what's going to push the ink into the fibers of the paper and stain them. Once again, the correct way to hold the Baron is to take the Baron flat, place your hand in it, fold it over like so, and you'll be printing with this wrist pressure like, like this. This is the Baron. I also have a whole stack of proofing paper here. Right, this is just a whole bunch of newsprint I cut down, and newsprint is the MVP of wood block printing. This newsprint has so many uses. You can use it to take proofs of your print. The first few prints I uh, take of this wood block are going to be on newsprint. Then I'm going to switch to my good paper. You can also use newsprint to block the block and print it if there's too much ink on the surface. You can also use it as a drying surface to place your prints. I highly, highly recommend you have a whole stack of newsprint with you while you're printing. Last but not least, I have some wax uh, paper or parchment paper, and this just acts as a barrier between the barren and the paper. Sometimes when you're printing with the barren, uh, especially if you're on a, using a rougher Japanese paper, the fibers can come loose and you'll get fibers all over your block. This wax paper will prevent that from happening. If you don't have parchment paper or wax paper, don't worry because you can always use a stack of newsprint. You can always use a sheet of newsprint instead. I am now going to show you the printing process. The block is nice and damp. It's cool to the touch just like the paper in my damp pack. When you're printing woodblock prints, 
consistency is very important. You are always going to put the same amount of pigment and paste on the block. When you pull a print and it doesn't look the way you want it to, maybe there's not enough ink or there's too much ink, it's really common to just want to overcompensate that, right? Like, oh, I'm going to use a whole lot less ink or not, no paste at all. But that would be a big mistake because the consistency is key to really finding the right rhythm. When you start pulling your first few prints, they are going to be light. You don't want to overcompensate by adding more ink to the block. You want to add the same amount and slowly build up to the um, consistency that you want. It's going to take like maybe four or five, perhaps even 10 proofs for the block to be sufficiently inked. But the important thing is that you consistently ink it and print it until it gets to that point. I like to think of it like this. Think of yourself in a car at a stoplight, right? The light is red. And when that light turns green, you don't just mash the accelerator and go straight to 60 miles per hour. Your foot, well, maybe you do, but you shouldn't. Don't do that if you do. Stop that. But you lightly push your foot on the accelerator, right? And you slowly build up, right? 5, 10, 15, 20, all like 45, all the way to 60. That is how this printing process works. You are going to use your proofs to slowly build up, get to know your block, and when you are comfortable, then you will start printing on your good paper. Typically, the first time you print, you are proofing your block because you are going to then make corrections, right? The woodblock print process goes as follows. You design your image, transfer it to the block, carve your block, you print, but that print is a proof, right? That's not the end. It be now becomes this cycle between carving and printing, carving and printing. So don't let that trip you up. This is the first time you really get to know your block and the materials you're working with. I'm going to begin by taking some nori paste and dropping it on the block. A little thick, one, two little dabs. And then for this first print, I'm just going to use my stenciling brush to cover the whole surface of my image, right? Very selectively with paste just to seal the block. Again, if you don't have Nori, you can skip this step. I find just applying Nori right beforehand um, and pulling a print of just the Nori is a good way to seal the block and it will build up faster. So I'm just going to pull a proof, right? I'm not even registering. I'm not putting the uh, backing sheet on between the Baron and the newsprint because this is just a really quick proof to get the process in motion. And there we go. All right. <laughs> First print. Now I'm going to do it again with paste and pigment. Mm. The Sumi ink smells so good. That's what I love about this process. One of the many things is that, you know, the natural materials of the Sumi ink, uh, you can just smell it. You can just feel the texture of the paste. So I've added two drops of paste and two dashes of pigment next to uh, right next to each other on the block. And I'm now going to take my stenciling brush and just start mixing it all together. And as you can see, there is some lightness on the block. And when, I am, uh, when I'm mixing this, I'm doing little circles using my wrist. I'm not going all over the place, although you could go back and forth like this. That's not selective but it could be a good way to cover your block just starting out. And I am just moving this pigment all around the block. Really get it in there. 
if you look closely at this block, you can see some of the swirling lines from my brush. So the last step is to gently just go brush up and down, zero pressure. All I'm doing is just wiping those circular lines away from my brush. I have a hair there for my brush. Get out there. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to pull my first proof. And remember, this is going to be light. So when you hold your printing paper, when you pick it up, I'm holding it scissors, just like I showed you before with my thumbs free. And I am sliding the first corner into my Kento registration, pulling the paper taut and dropping it down. And now I'm going to take my first proof by taking the Baron, just rubbing it like so across the whole block surface area. And then I'm gonna do little dime size circles after that and pardon my, <laughs> pardon the shaking cam right here. I'm shaking the whole desk. So little dime size circles. And this is my very first proof. It is light, but as you can see, as you will see, it's gonna build up over time. So I'm gonna place this right here. And I'm gonna add the same amount of ink. A bit of paste here, a bit of paste here. And as you can see, the block is already getting darker. Already. So we are building up the ink. As we build up ink on the block, we are also building up ink on the brush. I want you to carefully inspect your block. You don't have to pick it up and look at it like I'm showing you now, but as you can see here, this corner could use a little bit of inking, um, this corner over here. So these are just things to be conscious of when you are inking your block. And I'm going to proof another sheet of newsprint. And this newsprint is really, really valuable to you, not just for taking the proofs, but also you can practice your registration. So in a circle and dime size circles like so, using wrist pressure. I'm just going to, there we go. And you know, these prints are, these proofs are gonna be messy. That's not the point. The point is to charge your block up. So as you can see from the first two prints, it's already starting to come alive. So now I'm gonna switch up the area again. Switch up the area where I'm putting the pigment and the paste. Okay, so here we go, proof number three. Again, scissors, taut, taut, drop. And that's the third print. It's getting darker. The block is coming alive. So something really important to remember is like I've said a few times before when making the damp pack, you are staining the paper, not so much transferring ink to the paper, even though it does happen. But one of the reasons why you want to maintain consistency, putting the same amount of ink on the block every single time is because ink stays on the block. So you're constantly adding and adding and adding. The majority of the ink, the paste, is still on the block. 
And that's why it's getting darker. So again, we are charging our block up. And so tiny little dime size circles. All right, they're getting darker and darker and darker. And I'm not mashing with this block. I'm, I am pressing down, but I'm not mashing the uh, brush onto the block. I'm being firm. Now, when you use the wax paper, you just place the paper down on top like that. And again, when you're pushing, you're pushing with wrist pressure. It's like a full body exercise. You want that energy coming down from your shoulder, your arm, down to your wrist. Tiny little circles. And as you can see, it's really starting to develop. As you print, you'll notice your block is getting uh, damper and damper, and you're going to want to take a cloth or a, a paper towel and start clearing away some of these areas. I just have a microfiber cloth here, and when I look at this print, I have some areas here, right? I also have some areas here that are printing. These areas might be getting a little gunked up, so I'm just going to wipe away a little bit of that liquid. I'm not being super targeted about it, but I'm just noticing where it's starting to print and I'm just taking a little bit of that pigment away. Using your wrist pressure, right? Just like this, right there. And then you slowly pull from this corner out. As you can see, my block is really getting charged up now, right? We started with this and then went from this this that that and now we have that i love how this wood grain is starting to show through that's such a beautiful surprise so i think i'm going to print one on my somerset i'm going to keep these proofs in the order i printed them in because that's going to come in handy later so I'm going to stack these up, I'm going to set them aside, and now I'm going to start again with my Somerset, my good paper.